hello, hello, and thank you for tuning on to another episode of our Scripture Breakdown Ministry. My name is David Abraham, and our scripture for today comes from Ephesians 6, verses 5 to 7. And it reads, Born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Not with eye service, as to men please us, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. I repeat, born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service, as men please us, but as born servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Now, I want to divide the scripture into three parts. And the first part is, born servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Now, the key words here are bond servants, obedience, fear, trembling, sincerity of heart. Now, who are the bond servants? Now, in those days, in the days of um, Apostle Paul, when this book was written, was written, sorry, bond servants are people who are slaves, slaves that are bound to walk without any form of wages. A bond servant goes to work, to labor in a vineyard, to labor in a farm, to labor in a household, every day in day out, and is not paid any form of wages. The only thing they get for wages are their, their accommodation, where they live, or, and their, their, their food. That's all they have as their wages. But they are never paid any monetary returns for their services. So he says, bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters according to flesh. Now, Apostle Paul was speaking to the bond servants and he's speaking of um, covering that area of the, of the servant-master relationship. He says, bond servant, if you are in Christ, be obedient to your um, master Obedience is action, as I said earlier in the, the previous episode. Obedience is moving from one position to another. When you are given an instruction and you carry out the instruction, there is a form of action. It could be spoken action. It could be movement of the body from one point to another, which is usually movement to, to engage in work, engage in labor, not necessarily um, um, verbal um, engagement. So it says, be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh, according to the things of the flesh. That is, the flesh is what moves. The flesh is according to the worldly things, the worldly instructions. Worldly instructions are very different from biblical instructions. Worldly instructions are instructions that are done by the law. And it says, with fear and trembling. Now, fear and trembling is respect. Fear and trembling is reverence. Fear and trembling here means to show that um, respect of when, of doing things that they ought not to do when the master is doing things that, are, that will offend the master or trigger some sort of anger trigger resentment in the master when the master is not around. So that is fear and trembling, having reverence, having respect for the master at every point in time. So it's a trembling in sincerity of heart. Now sincerity of heart speaks about truthfulness, being truthful to the master, being truthful to uh, in your dealings with him, being sincere having integrity 
doing things that will enhance trust from the master as to Christ. So the way we, we um, trust Christ, the way we reverence Christ in fear and trembling, that is how we should reverence a master. Well, that, that was in those days, um, I would say. Now, in these days, it speaks about um, this goes to an employee and an employer. This goes to a superior and a subordinate in the working environment. The, 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 the master, who is the boss, or is superior, expects loyalty, expects commitment to duty, expects integrity, which is very paramount, expects trust. Now, trust is earned. So when they have um, shown themselves as a good, as as as, a, as um, exhibiting good governance, as far as staff welfare, as far as staff um, um, remuneration and other things are concerned, then there is a trust as far as implementing plans that are related to work and related to staff welfare. Then there is a continuous building of trust, trust which is earned. But well, in turn, as a, as, a, as a staff, they show integrity, they show commitment, they show to duty, they show you loyalty, they show diligence, diligence which is paramount, smart work, hard work, and all these are very important as a staff of an organization. Then he, he goes ahead and says, not with eye service. And eye service is acting as if you're doing something, yet you're doing nothing. As acting as if um, in, in the front of the, 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 the boss, when the boss is around, you act all busy. But when he's away, you're doing practically nothing. That, that, that is eye service as men pleasers. Now men pleasers are those that will go be an extra mile to make sure that the boss is happy with them. They will do things out of their jurisdiction, out of the ordinary, out of their work jurisdiction to make the boss happy. So not as men pleasers. So the, the Bible does not encourage eye service. The, the Bible does not encourage men pleasers. So, but as born servants of Christ, so, in all in all, there should still be um, taking the doctrines of Christ, the precepts, the statutes of Christ into the place of work. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Show um, sincerity of heart, which is integrity, loyalty, and doing the will of God from your heart. So, at every point in time, the will of God has to be carried out irrespective if you are in an office environment that is governed by laws which are laws of the flesh, that are governed by rules and regulations which are laws of the flesh. So it, at this point in time, the application of wisdom, the application of insight is paramount. The application of most of all common sense is paramount to be able to operate in this kind of environment. Then the last bit says, with goodwill doing service. With goodwill doing service. Now goodwill here speaks about sometimes going the extra mile in the course of your work. Going the extra mile in the course of your work, in the course of showing diligence to duty. With goodwill, with a good intention, with a good heart, with a good mind. That now these are people that are often acknowledged, and these are people, people that exhibit um, extra mile in their, in their sense of duty, are people that are promoted most of the time, that people observe, your, excuse me, your superior observe, and are promoted accordingly. Then it says, with goodwill, doing service as to the Lord, and not to men. So whatever goodwill or whatever extra mile you're going to show a sense of goodwill, 
is for the Lord and not to men. And these are, as I said earlier, these are people that are promoted because when you do it as to the Lord, the Lord in turn rewards you. And when the, the Lord wouldn't come down and reward you, He rewards you to promotion. He rewards you through upliftment. He rewards you to placing you in congratulatory positions. He rewards you by honoring you through men. He rewards you by giving awards, giving incentives, giving benefits to you. If you, if you operate in this manner, it says, with goodwill doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So for everything you do, every form of goodwill you show, every form of extra mile you go to do your duty, you're doing it as to the Lord. You're doing it because you are in Christ. You're doing it because you reverence God. You're doing it because the, the Word of God, which is the Bible, in Ephesians, Ephesians 6 verse 7, says so. And it says, and not to men. And when you do it to the Lord, then you can, you can be rest assured that there will be promotion. You can be rest assured that the rewards will come in abundance. You can be rest assured that there will be peace and tranquility in your heart. You can be rest assured that the, the troubles that sometimes the workplace brings as far as um, a relationship with staff will be minimal in most cases. Now I want to pray that God is able to expand our minds on this word, that God is able to give us more revelation or knowledge on this word, that we will be able to walk with Him and run with Him, that ultimately God gives us the grace that when we are in a work environment, that we're able to, to, to um, exhibit hard work and smart work and diligence, that ultimately we're able to exp exhibit goodwill that, that propels us to go an extra mile and ultimately he in turn from above will reward us all is I ask through Jesus Christ our Lord I thank you so much for listening God bless God bless in Jesus name Amen Amen